Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the gift of life and I very much thank God for the management of this wonderful church. It is well with you all. And I believe that uh, we are in here for a very wonderful time. Amen. I'm not going to make it like I'm here to preach. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to discuss with you what you probably know and what probably you, you claim to know but you need to really know. Amen? And uh, that's just what we're going to do today. I appreciate this privilege. And like Apostle Paul wrote to the Roman brethren, Romans 1, verse 11, he said that he had a burning desire to meet with the brethren that he might impart unto them some spiritual gift to the end that they may be established. That is the essence of our coming together. Iron sharpen, iron, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Iron sharpeneth, iron so he might sharpeneth what? The countenance of his friend. That's why we are here. So you're going to learn something, and I'm going to learn from you. The day you cease to learn, you start to die. So we're going to learn something. So today, so today, we are in, if, if, when I'm going on, you are free to put up your hand. Amen? But I believe that you have liberty today. And you have in your hands the questionnaire. You fill the questionnaire. Well, don't influence your spouse. Be very sincere and honest when you fill in these forms. And don't write your name, please. And in your questions, do not put your name in your questions. And as much as possible, we don't want to have any open question. Some postgraduate students are in the house. We don't want you to ask questions openly. Just write your questions. Don't put your name. And probably don't write your question in red or green so that you will not be identified. Amen. So today is a fun day. But the fun is still based on the word of God. Amen. Romans 10, 17 says, So therefore, faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the word of God. And you're going to hear the word of God and your faith will grow. And you will understand that God made everything but mystics. He never made a mystic. So you are not a mystic. And I pray you will live to glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So if you have your hand out, you will see that we have something written there in John chapter 14, 21 to 24. You have it in your hand out. So we are looking at the one that says sustaining your relationship. Sustaining your relationship. If you don't have one, just put up your hand, they will give it to you. Let us rise to read that John chapter 14, 21 to 24. John 14, 21 to 24. Are we there? Amen? To be sure we are paying attention, shall we all rise, please? When I want to pray, read prayer, I stand to pray. Amen? Uh-huh. So if you want to pray and you are standing, if you want to fall, at least the fall will be greater than when you are lying down. So that's why I say, okay, we read the Bible standing. You can read any version. I read any version. The version that I have here is amplified version. So you, you will all go, all go to read it loud and clear. Read your own version. Or you can read from the one that you have already printed. So we all go the same time. Amen. One, two, go. The person who has my commandment and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whosoever really loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. Judas, not Iscariot, ask him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my words, that is my teaching, and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. One, of the, one who does not really love me does not keep my words. And the word that is the teaching which you hear is not mine, but is the Father who sent me. My Father and my God are just pray. I will speak as your oracle. Every soul under the sound of my voice will hear as the learned. This shall not be my word, but you, 
the word that you sent through me unto this generation, that, Lord God, we may live a happy life, Lord, to your honor and glory in our marriages, because this is your first institution, but it has been bastardized by the devil. And you have given us the authority to tear upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, including whatever you have done to our marriages. Father, Lord God, give us victory today in Jesus' name. Let your peace rule and reign and let our joy be full. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. You can have your seat. Now, sustaining your relationship. Sustaining your relationship. If you are in one already, then you've got to sustain it. If you are not yet in one marital relationship, pray that God will open your eyes to marry the very bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. There is no greater disaster for a man or woman than to be wrongly married. Because marriage will determine where you are going to spend eternity, either hell or heaven. Many are already passing through what looks like hell here on earth. Marriage is not supposed to be endured, but to be enjoyed. But endurance is part of marriage. Because at any point in time, anything can happen. Like if you read all through, you say that they, I've written it there that your vehicle, well, if you have ever flown in an airplane, and I know that you have flown, but many of us, we just fly at the airport, we do not see what is happening. The tug will come to push the plane backward. It has no reverse gear. That is your marriage. So if you are contemplating marriage, uh, divorce in marriage, forget about it. You are not going anywhere. Hey, but if the man is going to kill me, he's not going to kill you. She's not going to kill you. And on a more serious note, some people are rescued by death. So whatever happens, it is for your own good. You see, we magnify death as if it's the end. It's just a transition. So don't let anybody threaten you with issue of death. Whether in marriage or outside of marriage. What, if you have made a mistake in getting married to somebody, well, the mistake cannot be corrected. I have written it. You can never be wiser than the accident that you are involved in. You can what? Never be wiser than the accident that you are involved in. Once it is called an accident, it has been wiser than you. If you are wiser, you will have corrected it before it happened. So if it had happened, just live with it. The best is not that which you do not have. The best is making the best of that which you have. So try to find something in that very man or woman. Oh, somebody was asked a tricky question. You say good things about everybody. What of Lucifer? Say, wow, Lucifer, that guy is very, very determined. Very courageous. He's very focused. He's very resilient. He will never give up. These are good attributes, right? About who? If so, if you are married to firstborn of Lucifer, that person still has some attributes. It is only your perception that is defective. I cannot see something good in him or her. So, don't condemn your spouse. Amen? So, sustaining your relationship. To sustain your relationship, you must recognize, understand, and apply the pillars of a good relationship. There are pillars on which you build your home. So, the pillars include are not limited to the following concept, ideologies, or principles. Number one, admiration and appreciation. You see, people, somebody said that, okay, the issue of marriage, I mean, after all, we didn't marry because of sex. You are telling me a lie. You married because of sex. You admire him or her. To say, ah, when will I rest on this chest? Now there's going to be sanctimonious where they come to church, they look over there, they cannot drink a cup of water, and then we say, hey, shh, be realistic. So don't close the border unless there's a curfew. Amen? So there must be admiration and what? Appreciation. Ordinary thank you. It's a mark of appreciation. Learn to do it. Oh, hello, my dear. You're looking sweet. When did you buy this blouse? Wow. Okay. You know, some men are in the house. You don't know the size of the pant under pant underwear of your wife. I'm sorry to say. You are not managing God's endowment well enough. <laughs> you don't know the size of her bra, whether she's 36B or 55A. Ah. 
Amen. When I was in England and my wife was in Nigeria, when I got to Dusty Market, and I saw they put, they put some, you know, open markets. Hey, bra, another. So I joined the women. I started to pick. I said, what is this man here? My own depositories in Nigeria. So I pick. This is 36B. This is you know, I don't want 36B. I want 36A. So when you get home today, go and check that bra. And go to the store. And buy one. I say, okay, hey, Valentine, hey, she will be surprised. So you even know the size. I bought an uh, underpant for my wife. I mean, uh, the, the bridge. And then when I brought it to her, she said, this one looks too big. I said, go and wear it and let us see. <laughs> and she went, she said, she, 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 okay, she, she put it on. She said, ah, it is my size. I said, I know what I carry. <laughs> it looks as if these people are postgraduate students. So you have to appreciate her. Appreciate him. Appreciation is very, very important. Don't be sanctimonious. I mean, I mean, good meal. Thank you. Even when you do a good driving, you ask, how is my driving? And when you park the car, you say, thank you for coming. You treat your passenger well. Amen? And if your driver did very well, you didn't have any splash or any damage uh, risk or anything because of the journey, you say, ah, you're a good driver. Amen. Learn to what? Admire and appreciate. Mutual trust and reliability. If you go to work and demand, they don't trust where you are, something is wrong. If truly you are a child of God, we should be able to trust you. We shouldn't be looking at, hey, where is it today? That's too bad. And we are in church. I pray God will help us. You must be reliable. You must be trustworthy. Your ingenuity and genuineness. You are in the house. When you make a statement, we can be sure that what you are saying is true and real. Even in your discussion, you are creative. You make him or her feel important. And you are genuine in your expression, not fake. There are many actors in marriage. Actors. Don't play an actor in your marriage. Be genuine. When you say thank you, mean thank you. I know your temperamental disposition may be at variance. And if it is at variance, that is just what you need in your relationship. You don't go to the market to buy two legs leg of a shoe. If you say you want that, you'll say to buy two pairs. It will be an abnormal creation. So you buy left, you buy right, then you walk balance. You don't. I went to conduct a meet, meeting like this in the place, and they feel the. There's another format, I may, I may outline questionnaire that is not in your package. That's about the disposition. And then the lady filled her own, and then she brought, I did doing some random sampling. I said, oh, I check. Okay, you are a choleric. Sir, um, okay, I said, sir, where is your wife? Oh, she's, okay, can I have your own phone, please? And I got it. Ah, excuse me, you are a choleric. No. How did it happen? It's not possible. You are a choleric. She's a choleric. How did you get to marry each other? It's not possible. And the lady said, ah. Sir, you are right. You are right. I was in Nigeria. They said there's a man in America who wants to marry. Will you marry him? I said, yes. Since I came, we have been fighting. I said, we fight. You will continue to fight. This is not the demon. In practical criticism, you, you see force in others what you hate in yourself, for which you also hate yourself. I don't want to do it, but you just find yourself doing it. That is who you are. So you don't need to, if you marry somebody who is exactly like you, there will be a problem. So you need the left leg of a shoe and the right leg of a shoe to work balance. So when you now complement one another and then there's something, you don't reason the same way. You're always having a clash. So some of these things is not because, ah, hey, there's a demon in this house. I'm a deliverance minister. But before you start to see me say, come out in Jesus' name, I know what I'm talking about. You are not addressing reality. I say, come on, what is coming out? This is who he is. He's a choleric. She's a choleric. And I told her, I said, you know what? Don't blame each other anymore. You have gotten the understanding of what is going on. Give Holy Spirit permanent residency in your home. Anytime my wife is pacing up and down in the house, I say, Holy Spirit, help me. I say, Holy Spirit, help her. <laughs> so that she doesn't pounce on me. 
Just help her. And when we reason aloud, you know, Christian couples don't fight. They what? They reason aloud. When we reason aloud, and I will still be talking, but uh, they, they are really hammer. And then she, I thought she would not be, oh, why you I said, but you what do I say? 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 I'm not shouting. You are the one shouting now. You, the door is locked. You, you reason aloud behind locked door. Our children have never seen us reason aloud. When you are reason aloud in the bedroom and somebody presses the bell, you borrow a smile from the Holy Spirit and you go to the, to the door. You open the door. How are you? Ah, how are you? Ah, well, um, I'm quite very busy right now, but uh, can you give me about, okay, can you come back in about uh, two hours? So, yeah, 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 I'll see you. Okay. Uh -huh. Where did we stop? So we reason aloud and we resolve the issue. Many things that we sweep under the carpet create undulation. And if there are a lot of undulation, you are likely to fall. <clears throat> so to avoid unnecessary falls, please do not sweep many things under the carpet, but at the same time, understand when to give up even your right. It will be stupid and senseless. You are driving a Mercedes-Benz car. And an 18 wheeler is coming on your own lane. And the whether soft or hard shoulder is empty. And you say, I have my right. Mm. Maybe your mansion is finished in heaven. <laughs> so you have to, oh, what's coming? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Pew! I say, ah, thank you, Jesus. If you do that on the freeway, you should do that in your bedroom as well. Give up that right at times. So that the trailer doesn't crash and crush you. Many, many homes have their families destroyed already. Go to come to church. Praise God. Pastor, God bless you, sir. You didn't do that at home. Say, good. Do that. You will see. When you come from church today, you will see. I said, Jezebel, I will teach you a lesson when we come from church. And then they now come to church. One is looking at the South Pole. The other is looking at the North Pole. And they drive, they park in the car park. They walk into the church. What are you going to do? You're wasting your time. Stay home, reason aloud, close the chapter, and come to church. Be real and genuine. Amen. Clear address of reality. That is, being realistic. This is, this is, this, this is what it is. Period. There are so many men that are so weak. Listen, when you need to take your stand, do what? Take your stand. As I said, Give up your right at times. At the same time, because you are the one. Genesis chapter 3. Did you find anywhere where God blame Eve? It was the man. He pronounced his sentence on Eve. But the verdict, initially all the blame came on, upon the man. So you the man in the house. Take responsibility of your position. But make sure you are led by the spirit of God. When you are taking your stance. God will help us. Liberty and liberality. Let there be liberty. Give him or her a measure of liberty. I know somebody, I mean, one of my ministers in Houston is married. And he told the wife, when you get out of this house, at the door, you have entered America. As soon as you eat this door, you are back in Nigeria. And that's the way he runs his house. You step in here. So don't call the police here. If you want to tell, this is Nigeria. And in my head, you know, you can't force people to learn their lessons. Uh, the lady is still a Nigerian woman because she came from Nigeria. But one day she will be Americanized. And that true house will become America as well. And you know, that's not going to come easy. God will help us. We should be realistic. You should have liberty. Give him or her liberty. I mean, your financial relationship. Have liberty, even your finances. I have my own account. She has her own account. We have our joint account. I mean, my wife, you know, like I said, she's a choleric. She told me, but just last two weeks, we went to go and put my name in our own account. We've been married for 37 years. I just said, well, I'm not fussy about that. Mm, but 
I said, after I didn't tell you that. She said, I didn't tell you I would take care of you with all my possessions. You told the church that you take care of me with all your possessions. So what is the argument? I said, that's no argument. Put, I put her name in my own account. And whatever you get, you, you, I mean, it is only when you are a man in skirt that you contain such things. I'm a man, I know I'm a man. I don't need to tell me, do you know I'm a man in this house? You have lost it. Hey, well, then when she saw that, ah, this liberty is almost being abused. And I said, I don't, want to, don't worry. My name is not in that account. And what is in that account? I don't even care. But when she saw that, this development, <laughs> the money that is coming about this and that, ah, I said, hey, you don't have, she said, ah, no. Well, okay, let us go to the bank. I have told them, you want to put your own name? Ah, well, what I have, I know what I have. The money I generate, I know what. The one I've entrusted to her, she's at liberty to spend them on my behalf. <laughs> but the one that I choose to hold, don't cross the line. <laughs> but occasionally she will tell me, you, your account is running down. Can I send you some money to that account? Oh, I say, is it going down? And she knows that she's, she looks into the account. If I don't do that, we shall be reasoning aloud. <laughs> but it works with me. It will not work with you. There's no relationship that is cast in iron. Whatsoever works in your marriage is what works. Are we together? It, she came on her own that, okay, ah, my dear, your name should be on that very account. So it's very, very important. Be very, very liberal. But one thing, don't abuse liberty. It's very, very important. All these things are very crucial. If you have this knowledge, like a lady told me, said that if I knew this thing before now, I would have retained my marriage. But it's too, almost too late for her. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So you look at all these things. I think we're talking about liberty and liberality. Then the confidence and confidentiality. Whatsoever is discussed in your bedroom, let your spouse have confidence in you. I think that's chapter 54 from verses 1 to 4, something like that. Some of us here, we may have in the house some immature. Listen, maturity is not determined by chronological age. It is determined by the power of perception and emotional maturity. You can be 60 years old, but you are still a baby. If you have to consult with your parents before the two of you will decide what you want to do in your home, you are not yet mature for marriage. Confidentiality should be there. Amen. Hey, my husband said, and that is where we stand. Period. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, mom. You have had your own fair time. This is where we stand on this issue. Period. You see, if you read my book, In Laws in Episode, my mother in law, very strong choleric. Very strong choleric. When we got married, even before we got married, I got some of my wife's siblings. I put them in the school I was teaching. So they got used to me. So when we got married, this is a reverse. It's a reversal of role. When we got married and their sister came in, we had a courtship for five years and one week. Five years and one week courtship. So I mean, when the, when the sister came in, you know, they were used to me. When my wife talks, say, but that didn't say so. Uh, and when the mom said, hold on, my dear, did you hear that? They did not listen to me. Uh, and I called her and said, she gave me instruction, you didn't do it. But, hey, but have you, I said, listen, whatever she tells you, my wife is the ruling authority in this home. She has my permission to say so. The question is, who is the ruler? This, get the logic. She is the authority in this home. She has my permission to say so. So who is the ruler? I am the ruler. So if my wife speaks, and you cannot respect her, you have disrespected me. And it went on like that. So I, then I said, hey, you know what? I told my wife, you know what? I'm going to flush them. And by my disposition, a melancholic is a dormant volcano. <laughs> a, a melancholic is a frozen sea. You can build your house on a dormant volcano. There are places in Canada you can drive your car 
across the frozen sea. But when you build your house on a dormant volcano, and you decide, you decide to drill for water, you will get something too hot to drink. So I said, you know what? These children must go. So I decided to flush them. And my mother-in-law came from the bottom to our place. I said, eh? What are you talking about? Do you think this with their, when, they, when they grow up, do you know what they're going to become? And I was pleading and said, explaining everything. They are not going anywhere. In my head, I said, who said? In whose house? said, they are not going anywhere. They are saying, yeah. I said, Mama, you see, they have been giving us problem. I will pay the rent in the apartment I'm getting for them. But it's just not still under this roof with us. They are third party in marriage. I have a book on third party in marriage there. He said, I have said. I said, who said? What is all this nonsense? Eh? I said, hey, me nonsense. Hey, me nonsense. She packed her. Eh? Hey, me nonsense. When I got to that level, <laughs> my wife knows, if you get me to that level with you, you can never be a winner. I said, no, out of here. And she took her back and she walked out. My wife followed her. Uh, Mommy, uh, you're the, go, go back to your husband. You're a very rude husband. She walked away. My wife came back. And she said, my dear, how dare you say, he, he said, my dear, you know what? I'm very sorry about that. But you know, you can understand. I am really fed up with all this. You, you know, I was explaining to her. She wouldn't listen. I mean, I know. I mean, she, I'm, I've married a product, right? So I know what it looks like to deal with one. <laughs> <laughs> so she went away. I sent a message to her. You know, we sent food to our elders. She returned the food to me. If you read the book, in lost an episode. I had to go to her. And when I went to her, I was already determined that I would be beaten up. So, you know, the houses that are face me, I face you, with a long passage at the middle. And uh, she was at the back of the house. When I came, I just looked. That was after three months. I said, that is easy. Okay. So I was walking towards her. When I got to the door of the back, to the back of the house, she got up. Okay. Then I stopped moving. I stayed by the side of the door. You know, I'm very, very athletic. I've been playing soccer and all this stuff, so I can dodge and uh, escape. <laughs> so she came. When she got to the side of the door, I stood uh, with perfect reflex, <laughs> ready. And when she, she passed by me, I walked behind her. We got to the room. She sat down. And I sat down. You know, I prayed. Prayed. I said, Woo! She started crying. <laughs> Uh-huh. When I saw her crying, I joined her. <laughs> you know, I thought she had to import tears. <laughs> I joined her. We worked together. And then she turned. And I turned because my mother died when we fixed our wedding for 1985. So, but uh, Daddy Gio, you know, some of you don't trust your pastors. You don't consult with your pastors. Your fathers in the Lord are not anything if you are bent on doing what you want to do. We met with him those days. I mean, up to today, we still relate father and son and daughter. And he said, Your wedding. Hey, I don't know what is going to happen. I don't have an idea of what, but can you just move it? He said, Why? He said, I don't know why. Ah, you don't know why you should move it. If you have a reason. I know that I've been keeping my engine in the running room without driving for how many years? Four years already. The engine was almost overheating. <laughs> now, we were supposed to marry, and you now say we should move it. <laughs> so, you know, you know when God speaks to you, many times we, mod we, we moderate the speech of the Holy Ghost. So we said, okay, come back next week. So we came back the following week, and then he said, what did God say? He said, God said we should go ahead and do the wedding. <laughs> He said, well, if you say God said you should go ahead and do the wedding, I'm sorry God didn't tell me that you should go ahead. Uh, he said, well, you have to, well, you have a choice. If you want to do it in Redeem, well, you will wait for the one year. If you don't want to, you can go ahead any, in any church. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But uh, 
that I don't understand. I can't just tell you what is wrong. Ah, we walk out of the office, at least we have options. After all, my father, a Methodist. Her father, a Methodist. So you can do it in family, the church of the parents. Listen, permissive will will destroy you. Don't ever seek permissive will. So we agree. So, well, if he doesn't know the reason why, let us just consent. My mother died a week to the supposed date of the wedding. If you had never postponed it, it would have been a big mess. Then I leave my mother in the mug and be saying, tan, 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 where? <laughs> so we obeyed him. And that was how. And then my mother in law now promised me that I will be a mother to you. Now that she has messed up in my house, in our house, I think that was what she remembered because by her dressing mirror was the picture of my mom. So when she looked there, I, I don't know whether she focused there and I also focused that direction and I saw the picture of my mom by the dressing mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and the, those tears bonded us. Our children were always asking, whose mother is she? Because, my, you know, too choleric, we never see her to eye. Whenever she comes to visit us, it is always fight. The two of them. In fact, we had a pastor who visited us, and they were having their usual argument and fight, so as it were. Ah, the pastor said, Pastor, what do you ah, Mama, it is enough. What is going on here? This is mama. Ah. So when I stepped into the house, the pastor said, ah, ah, Pastor, Daddy, it's good you are here. I said, what is happening? He said, ah, Pastor and Mommy, he, they are, uh, I said, ah, uh, I said, don't worry. And then I said, eh, you will just, I said, ah, but he, the way we are going with this fight, we will not enjoy our money. You will finish this fight before, before the first three rounds. Let us slow down so that we can get real value of our money. Uh, uh, the pastor said, I thought when you come in, you will say, uh, said, they are not fighting. They are bending the lights. <laughs> when they talk, I thought you think they are fighting. They are not fighting, leave them. So I said, yeah. What did you ask her for? She said, I don't know. She said, I don't know. But you know that when I come, she said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go She can't tell you that. I'm going to go to the house. When my son comes, my son will do the right thing. I say, yeah, yeah sit down. Hey, I'm not going to eat her food. I say, but uh, look, you after, then I'll get the food, put the food into my hand in Amala, whatever. Say, yeah, wait, open your mouth now. <laughs> so, yeah, put it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. And the general said, what's going on here? Whose mother is she? You should switch your parents. Switch your parents! Don't, uh, this, is my, this is my mother. So, let him take care of your mother. Let her take care of your parents. You can play on their intelligence. And you have a happy home. But this is my mother. I'm taking care of my mother. Then you, 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 your husband said, what, 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 so you me. What, what, when my father came, he didn't give attention. No. Switch. Am I communicating? Yes. Clap for Jesus. So when you leave this meeting, exchange your parents. Ah, but, uh, Pastor, you don't know what you're talking about. If you know the, if you know the mother, uh, listen, nobody can resist true love for too long. When you really love somebody, and the person is still doing negative, and you continue very soon, the person will be broken. And the we bond. We bonded, and my mother-in-law, whatever she says, I managed to make sure I meet her needs. And she, my wife knows what I'm doing. So uh, she, all I request, she will pass it to me. And when she's Fighting all the children, or give the children instruction. You know, parents don't believe that their children are growing. And they still want to talk to them, address them as if they were still the little girl, but they are married. When she talks to them and they will not, she will not, she, they will not listen or she will not act into whatever they are saying, they will say, We shall report you to Pastor. And when they report to me, I say, Yeah, uh-uh. do, do, do you know? She will have been caning her before. Can you cane her? And I say, Me only, no more. <laughs> if you cannot cane her anymore. Listen to what she's saying. Say, I can hear you. But I'm already walking. I say, yeah, I don't know, Jerry. This and that. She listens to me. I mean, let me make this is a very funny one. My mother in law said she wanted a car. 
I said, okay, now what do we? He said, he said, you know what? You know those things that they have shagari, the one with the the, 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 the lights the behind, also like a, you know, the big one, the big shagari something. So that is what I want. Yeah, that weapon is very expensive to maintain. So they got to move any year. So I sent somebody to Germany, and they got the car, exported it to Nigeria. She got the car. She will sit at the back of the car. All the police stops. I mean, you can't take that car because if they drive in that very car, all the police stop points. They know that is E.S. car. I'm a mission. I need to She will give them money everywhere. She will cook and give to the police all these people. F give them food. Even in the house, she would, so they know her. And when I took the car, I was sitting at the back one day, and they, they got the police support, they, they stopped, and then the man said, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to, talk to the driver. Ah, it's okay, because I was not the owner of the car. They need to see his car, but they want to ex explain the driver. And after I talk, he said, talk to your guy at the back. Said, oh, so it's your guy. It's your guy. Hey, very soon, after some years, he said, my, oh, mommy, what do you think about me? <laughs> I said, what is the, he said, my son, this guy is almost killing me. I said, what is the police? He said, oh, yele, oh, yele, man, only motor, only, 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 Bobo won't we get a minute meeting fish in motor ton? So okay, let me find a smaller car. You see, if I have insisted that she should get a smaller car at the beginning, we will fight. When she was going to die at the age of 83, she said, If my son does not even kill a chicken at my funeral, I have eaten all I could. <laughs> Brethren, take care of your old parents. It doesn't make any human sense. When they die, you now close the road, rent a big hall for party. If anybody wants to eat rice, let them go home and eat their rice. I only entertain people at funeral so that you don't have two corpses. <laughs> After they have eaten whatever they have served, go home. It doesn't make any sense. But take care of them when they are alive. Whether they are your in-law or your parents. Take care of them. God will help us. The sense of service and commitment. I think I've treated that along with that. Mutual respect and gratitude. When you get there, there's a book that is called Mutual Respect. And then, tolerance and endurance. Just, you see, marriage is supposed to be enjoyed, but at times, endurance is necessary. The way your father brought you up may not be the same way. My daughter, in our own house, if you didn't buy it, you don't finish it. It's a rule. If you didn't buy it, don't what? If it is bread and you didn't buy it, don't finish it. You can eat it. Our house has never been only us. My wife picked people up off the street and bring them home. We have a seven bedroom, bed, bedroom house that is always packed full. At times, you know, so you have different people, they come in. Some of them are, you, you don't even know how to describe them. I have some good ones. So it's a, it's a rule. Whatever I don't want them to eat, I take it to my bedroom. <laughs> so if you didn't buy it, don't finish it. And uh, you put them there, anybody can eat. It's a rule. So if, you, if it's fingers of banana, there are 12 of them. You have taken 11. The last one, because the person that bought it may be coming from somewhere, believing that he has something at home. And he just can say it has been finished. If the person didn't curse you, he will not bless you. <laughs> so he said, it looks simple. But when our daughter got married, and she was trying to say the same thing, you know, uh, in my own house, in our house. I was brought up in a way, in a body house. You must lay your bed. Once you wake up in the morning, do what? Lay your bed. Once you get out of bed, and you have not laid it, it means you are coming back to sleep. So it's a rule. But when she got married, the other one didn't want to comply. I said, that is your own home. You buy anything, they finish it, it is finished. Here, in our own home, and the other one said, that is the rule in your father's house. And it works for them. So please, 
let there be sanity. But an enforcement of sanity by all means is also a height of insanity. God will help us. So there must be tolerance and endurance. Embrace and submission. You learn to, I mean, in honor of one another. Romans, I think that's Romans chapter 10, 12, or 12, 10. I think it's 12, 10. In honor, prefer you one another. So there will be tolerance, then embrace and submission. All encapsulated in love. That's First Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 13. If all we are talking about, everything is based on what? Love. If truly you love somebody, the person will infringe on you on one moment or the other. The true love will see you through at such moments. It's all encapsulated in love. So, compliance with the life and principles of Christ. That is genuine salvation in Christ. Because Amos 3, 3 says, how can two work together unless it be that what? They agree. If your husband is not born again, don't bring born again concept by force, by fire to him. Let him learn born again through your life. Let her learn born again through your life. Not that, ah, Amos, you are the firstborn of Lucifer. He will remain the firstborn of Lucifer. At times when we reason a lot, and my wife says something about me, which is peculiar with me. And I will say, you are not a false prophet. I'm telling the truth. That is who I am. Yeah, say another one. <laughs> Amen. You, th you think pastors don't reason aloud? We also reason aloud. You might to somebody that you never knew from Adam. Now you have to live together. We've been together for 37 years. So my wife knows that when she's talking and she's pacing throughout the house and I just keep quiet, hmm, she will just be praying that I pray that he doesn't talk, he doesn't talk. She will say everything she wanted to say. I will be assimilating some of them. I will not talk. And I say, okay, so I say, are you done? Hey. That is, you will continue to say it. Because I know if I react, it's not going to end well. Because there is hardly a way you can correct a choleric. I spent years to teach my wife to say, I am sorry. It is not because she is evil. That is the way God wired her head. And you cannot change me a melancholic. That is the way I have been wired by God. I can pray and I have something from God and um, I see, tell God, okay, I have to execute it. But just a matter of telling my wife, she will jump into action. And listen, you cannot afford to blame your tool. The initiative belongs to you. Every man, woman around you, your children, they are tools in your hands. The abuse of that very tool is to your own detriment. So you cannot blame your tool. Make the best of that tool that you have. Hey, my husband is this and that. He's very unreliable. He doesn't keep his word. He's a sanguine. When someone tells you I'm coming tomorrow, forget about it. I teach my people, okay, be, I mean, when I saw uh, entrepreneurship and resource management, something like that, when they were talking about it. Yeah, we have something like that. Okay, people start your own business. And all this guy said, certainly car wash business. He started it in the church. And he came to my office. Ah, daddy, can I wash your car tomorrow? I said, at what time? He said, uh, at one o'clock. No, no, at 12. I said, that is fine. I'll be here in the office. And as he left my office, I told the guy that was with me, I said, if he comes by 12 o'clock, then I'll have a testimony in church. <laughs> because he's a very high level sanguine. When it was a few minutes later, I said, my phone rang. Hello, sir. He says, ah, sir, I'm running late. I said, okay. Uh, when do we expect you? Before one, by one, around one. I said to myself, if it's by one, well, that's fine. When it was one, past one, he called. He said, excuse me, sir, can we do it tomorrow? <laughs> now, if I don't have knowledge, am I communicating? Ah, hey, you go, why are you you're very unreliable? No, that is the way his brain is wired. You can't, you can't change him overnight. Many of us, we have clashed in our relationship because you don't even know who you married. 
When you know his disposition, you know her disposition, you know the way she reasons, when she manifests herself, you can't tell a goat not to bleach. And the dog is backing and say, ah, why are you behaving like this? I just, I just, whoa, 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 whoa. Say, ah, why are you backing? The dog must back. Ah, this bird, why are you, ah, the bird is flying. Why must he, ah, excuse me, what did you call it? A bird, let him fly. If you don't know these things, that is why. Listen, there are some things we have we blame the devil. You see, at times we make the devil feel swollen headed. How can the house boy that was sacked in heaven be your own boss on earth? We create, he, the, devil, I don't, the devil didn't do anything. Before you see me say the devil did something, I must have. I mean, check every area. Just, ah, this is Lucifer. This is the devil at work. But when you miss it at the point of knowledge, I have a book there, Understanding Your Spouse. I have another book there on perception. It is our perception that determines our lines of action. If somebody says, okay, uh, don't mind it, I pass out there. It's an idiot. It's a foolish man. Yeah, I can be an idiot in some areas of life. Because, by the way, the word idiot is not abusive. It's just that you have limited knowledge on what you're talking about. That is why if your, 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 your lawyer says, Hey, my lord, my client is an idiot. He said, hey, come and get your money. <laughs> She's not trying to, trying to abuse you. You don't have adequate knowledge of what we are what, discussing. When you call me a foolish man, I have a track record that doesn't show that this is a foolish man's lines of action. So if I go to fight you, I must be as stupid and ignorant as you. Because you don't know me. But if my wife says, I did you are a foolish man. Ah, the cause for prayer. <laughs> we should pray. Because she knows me more than anybody. If I'm not foolish, she must have lost her mind. We should pray. So either of the two ways, we should what? We should pray. So your spouse is the one that knows you more than any other person. That is why you cannot afford to talk to your spouse anyhow. And I'm just joking. Who said? Hey, but I said to a so, so, so person, he didn't take it serious. Oh, yes. Is that your husband? No. This is your husband. You cannot say any nonsense. My wife is the only person that offends me the most in the world. Because an offense is no offense until it is registered in my subconscious mind. You can do whatever you like. I can walk away. Look at your ignorance. But if she says, uh, look at him, idiot, foolish man. Ah, my dear come. Am I really... Foolish. We should pray. Oh. But if I'm not really foolish, look at what I'm doing. Are you really okay up there? So the very person whose comment amounts to something in your life is who? Your spouse. When well, you abuse each other anyhow. Yes, I you abuse you real each other anyhow. It doesn't show mutual respect. I pray God will help us. So you look at all these things. If you have salvation in Christ Jesus, and it's Malachi 2, 15 downwards, you should not deal treacherously with your spouse, with your husband or with your wife. You must respect him. And some of these things, you may say we are old school. You pluralize your, the, the, the verb you used to describe your wife or the pronoun in Yoruba language. We do it. English is very easy. How are you? Uh, what have you done? And this and that. Yeah, that. Oh, you speak your language. That's mutual word, respect. You will see me address my wife and say, oh, they was by. Ah, my dear, eh, it was even a little respect for each other. Hey, what? Yemi, uh, Aki, hey, busy, come here. Can you go? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's fine. That is easy and acceptable in your bedroom. When you are outside in the public places, even if you don't, if your spouse doesn't feel humiliated, subordinates around may say, ah, ah. And you, you, you reduce your own value, not the value of the person that you have uh, spoken to. It is you. And you know these lawyers, they think that they are the only people that are learned in the world. They call themselves learned fellows. And we were at a meeting, and uh, there were a team of lawyers and one of the lawyers was standing by, and the wife was around. And the wife just called his name. Hey, can 
And all of them just turned their eyes at her. Like, who, 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 who is this? Because they respected that colleague. And she just said, yeah, yeah. You see, when you respect others, you bestow respect upon yourself. When you treat your wife or your husband shabbily in the public, you have reduced your own personal value. My people say when the leopard parades itself too often at the marketplace, it becomes a wild cat. That's a Yoba proverb saying. Bekum bakpelo ja to bakpelo di adam adi akata. You don't want to be a wild cat. You want to be respected, so you respect your spouse. Hey, how are you, ma? God bless you. Can you have your seat? I opened the door when we were in courtship, uh, when we want to take taxi because I didn't have any car at that time. I had no bank account because our kingdom is not of this world. We are going to heaven. <laughs> we are a little wiser than that now. <laughs> Amen. So when we want to take a taxi, I will open the car, the door for her. She will say, I hope uh, this door will be opening like this. So. <laughs> and nothing I see do it. Some people say that, uh, in fact, somebody, somebody said that, uh, uh, what did he say? He said, what did he say? That is a mumu man. I celebrate the Igbo people. When you see an Igbo man's wife, that is his glory. That is his pride. I'm telling you. The wife is the pride of an Igbo man. When I was a kid, in those days, when we go, they go to this Omunam uh, uh, meeting, you see the man wearing one short uh, knicker and one t-shirt. And carrying the bag and a baby. And the woman will be walking gorgeously. Well dressed in this, uh, what do you call it? This judge rapper. And she'll be going gorgeously. Uh, on Sunday, they always have the middle. I say, ah. Yeah, no, 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 what is all the above? <laughs> <laughs> we look at them like that. That time we look at this man. He's carrying the bag. And the woman is walking. <laughs> the woman will be going. <laughs> Listen. That woman is his investment. That is his pride. And whatever you do to preserve your pride is worth it. But when you clap for Jesus, people, people, God bless you. They cherish their wife. I served in Iyala, uh, Anambra State, 1979. They warned us, hey, if you talk to a Igbo lady, say, Ogadimu. If she say, Mba, walk away. But if you mess up, they will chase with cutlass. The parents value their children. So they must come to ask for you. Not you that you are giving yourself. You have not been married. You are having sex. You have sold yourself. Look, you, have, you, are, you, are, you are a second hand vehicle. The day you get into a, a showroom and then they just uh, they say you want to test drive. Once you drive the car away, papers have been filled. If you bring it back the following day, it is a used car. The value drops. The same thing with every lady. When I was in the world, my the pastor was born again. I was not, I was a cook. <laughs> On a more serious note, when I got married, I would just be fine. I let me be able to impregnate a woman <laughs> because I used to carry STD. They inject you. Pew. So one day they injected me. The hospital said, "Ah, brother, a be more. What's your business? Don't do it again." So I was not born again, but I was reasonable enough not to do it again. I was not born again, so, and I was reasonable enough. So now you are born again, and you have lost your senses. I mean, how do we reconcile the two? That is why, because I was bad. Becoming born again, I know what it means. So I can't imagine one brother. There are many cases. I mean, by the grace of God, I'm in charge of prison and reconciliation for North America, Canada, Caribbean, South America, South America, all this. When a matter cannot be resolved over there, they refer to my table. And I start to write reports. These people can frustrate you. Instead of writing my books, I spent writing reports. I mean, pastor messing up with members. Eh? I mean, you can't believe it. When I was not born again, I was bad. I knew I was bad. I have a pride. 23rd of May, 1977 now. There's not one living human being in this world, including my wife, that can say something that will make me be ashamed. That's what I call Christianity. I mean, I was bad. Oh, yeah, Father, let me be able to impregnate you. After all, when my wife was convinced to marry me, we didn't, I mean, my bio was not given. My social bio, that was not like that. Have you been, have you had gonorrhea before syphilis? No. <laughs> we didn't do any question. So if God said you should marry him, hey, hey, you, 
if you cannot produce, that's your cup. <laughs> so we got married, and I was just saying, God, just let me be able to impregnate a woman. No. The first month, there was no pregnancy. I said, my God. She didn't know that I was also worried, even for the first month. The second month, she became pregnant. Ah, yes. I said, see, my dear, I don't know. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. Some of you men here, you don't know where your wife menstruates. You don't know anything. You just come to deliver. You just open the depository and you just make your delivery and you just drive off. And you are coming the second day, they will lock the gate. <laughs> you should know when the red light runs. And when the red light, I mean, I know the rainy season, I know the dry season. So when you know the rainy season, you know what? When I was a young boy, I had a dog. I studied my dog to know the menstrual circle of my dog. And I don't want her to mate with any frivolous, rascally, or ugly dog in the street. So I put it on a chain. When I find a good one, I say, you come. <laughs> come, come and be my in-law. <laughs> so when we had it, then the dog became pregnant. Because I, I mean, the only science I did was biology. So I studied the life cycle of a dog. So I knew everything. So I checked my dog, created created a place where the dog is going to deliver. And, and dogs are very intelligent animals. I showed her everything. So I was calculating. Yes, now she's supposed to be due next week. So I played the, something there. And the dog said, hey, spin up, spin up, spin up. Here I come. Say, okay. Say, okay. Yeah. Well, it was the day. She said, yeah. I said, and it was the day. So the dog was uh, in this passage. Hey. I said, hey, it's still good. It's still good. You know, just like human being. Hey, hey, hey. I said, it's good. So when she was coming to me, you know, ah, very fine. I, ah. I ran. I climbed a drum. I said, go, go, go there. I said, ah, oh, oh. Then she went back there. Then she went there. Oh, oh, oh. When the first one came out, she cleaned the thing in a few minutes. Blah, 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 cleaned everything. Then I said, hey, spin up. Then, by the time I went to bed, when I came in the morning, she got four. Now, if I had time to study my dog, to know a menstrual circle, when I got married, I studied the menstrual circle of my wife. So I knew when she was supposed to menstruate. I knew when she was supposed to be taken or when she could not take in. You need to know all these things as men. One day, we went to a clinic in London, and the man said, eh, Madam, when last was your menstruation? She said, let me go and ask my husband. <laughs> and she said, when last was my menstruation? And I told her. And she went, she said, so, so, so did. You know, we do this uh, reading method. When I'm driving, I know the time I'm supposed to deliver. I know the depository that is fruitful. And I know the barren land. So, and I said, okay. So when, because I knew I was bad, when we had the first pregnancy and the baby came, a girl, I was happy. Then I said, this is the only girl we're going to have in this family. <laughs> because I've studied this thing. Leviticus 15, 20 downwards. It's there in the Bible. You can determine the sex of your unborn child. I told them, my local church, don't come and tell me God has given us another girl. Kept, go back to bed. The reason is this. Listen. We are creating problems in the church today. Problems. If you don't drive with care, you bump into so many, I mean, axe shoulder, some shoulder, you destroy everything. Even some shrubs, you destroy them. And you say that it is just the storm. Which type of a storm? You are a reckless driver. You must drive purposefully, knowing where you are going, and you know the field where you want to deposit the seed so that it will grow. If you don't want it to grow, you know where to drive, and it's not going to grow. Read your Bible. So I said, this is the only girl we're going to have. And that's the only girl we had. That's the only girl we have. Every other one will be boys. Our last born, because we used the reading method, and I calculated, I knew when she's going to menstruate, I knew a safe period, when I can drive and deposit, and there's no problem. So, but she was, she had candidates, whatever they call it. So they put on antibiotics and it disrupted our ovulation circle. In my calculation, I was depositing in a barren land. <laughs> so when the circle completed, I said, oh, my dear, you're supposed to menstruate yesterday. He said, ah, no, yesterday. I said, yes. He said, are you sure? I said, but yet your circle is yesterday. I said, have you seen it? He said, no. I said, okay, let's wait till tomorrow. It's the following day. I said, my dear, have you seen it? She said, no. Ah. I said, I'm scared. He said, are you afraid? I said, no, no, not that I'm afraid, but I know what I did now. You're supposed to. 
Papa, you said we're not doing it anymore. I said, ah, that's okay now. You go to the chemist. You know, bad boys, they have their good days. <laughs> when you get to the chemist, tell them they want to buy a pregnancy test kit. You say, what does it look like? Said, when you get there, they will tell it, send it to me. <laughs> so they sold it to her. She brought it home. Go to the restroom. Put it at the gate. And let the rain fall. So she put it there and she brought it. When she brought it, and she showed it to me. And I read it and said, my dear, you are pregnant. Eh? No. Ha. Ah, this and that. Hey, no way. Yeah. God do. Hey, hey. I said, it has come to stay. They went to the doctor. The doctor said, well, this is just like a blood clot, just about two weeks. You can just flush it. I said, don't flush it. Leave it. That was the baby that bailed us out of our immigration problem. You see, when you are bought, you destroy your own future. You may never know who that person is going to become. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, these are basic facts. We are just dealing with the basic what? Facts now. Now, if you have filled your form, right? Because I have just 12 minutes more according to the time. So, we can talk about some of these things now. Nobody had put up the hand to ask any question or submitted any question. So, so we have some steps. Steps to sustaining a good marital relationship. I have listed them there, so you don't need to, if I don't even talk about them, it's good to talk to people that are learned, so you can read it yourself. Amen? So those steps are there, and I pray. You sp spend time to read all of them, and uh, everything will work out well. And uh, I have a book there, um, marriage companion. In that book, I explain how to produce baby boy or baby girl. It's true. This is, uh, listen, Osea Fossey say people are what? They are destroyed because of lack of uh, knowledge. We need to know all these things. Take time, ask your wife. If you have not been doing it, look at her circle. If her circle is not 30 days, if it is 20 something days, you have to understand. If she has a regular circle, you have to understand. So you plan together, and in worst case scenario, if, you, if, if it is not possible to, to maintain or calculate our time, you can go to the chemist and buy ovulation test kit. Technology had made most of these things easy. Ovulation test kit, you see, according to Bible, Leviticus 15, 28 downwards, if you read it, when she starts the menstruation, according to the Bible, five days. After the five days, she will number two days unto herself. After the two days, then she will now go to the uh, priest and they do all the rites and all the rituals. But to put all the days that they do all these rituals together, it is always 13 days. Check from the scientists and the nurses and everything. An average man ovulates on the 13th day. So if you if deposit by the night of the 13th day, it's going to be a boy. It's a basic knowledge. You see the Bible. So that was how we got all I mean, we had only one, we have only one girl. The first one, the second one, a boy, the third one, a boy, the fourth one, which was said that we didn't plan. But in my calculation, it I overshot because I thought that uh, everything was done with. And, and then my wife said that, ah, is it going to be a boy or a girl? I said, it can never be a girl. It can only be a boy. I said, ah, because the, the, the first one, is it, I want another girl. I said, it's not another girl. This is also another boy. Because at that very time, I mean, for, for anything to be there, the boy will be very fast. The boy will hit. Once the boy hits the, 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 the house, he closes all the borders. And then no other person can come in. Security put in place. Ushers are very effective. <laughs> I go for the ushers in this church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is it. So these things are in the Bible. I don't teach anything outside of the Bible. But I'm telling you, if you follow the Bible and read all these things, acquire knowledge. I have books in my house that I can never finish reading even if Christ wouldn't come the next 50 or 60 years or 100 years and I'm still alive. Why do I see by them? Just one pas passage. I wrote, read a book. Just one passage. Just a paragraph. George uh, Romesh said something. He said, hmm, I wish I remember it. He says, Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the fragrance of the rose that clings to the hill that crushes it. See, that is forgiveness. The fragrance of the rose 
that clings to the heel that crushes it. If that is true about your marriage, the man or the woman is crushing you. But if truly you have love, if you raise that heel up and you smell it, that rose clings to that very heel. That is the true love. Are you ready for that? I pray God will help us. So, um, I believe that you have learned something. Amen? Now, you have the questionnaire with you. If you have filled them, I will need one of the ministers to be here with me. Those are questions, right? Okay. Just read the question. Praise the Lord. This one says, what is a conjugal relationship? Is courtship the same as dating or having a boyfriend or girlfriend? Praise the Lord. Courtship is not the same thing as your today's dating. When you go to blind date, that is why you pick somebody that is as blind as you. <laughs> dating, all this, all this modern approach, they are not acceptable in the sight of God. You need to seek the face of the Lord and pray. God will link you somewhere, somewhere along the line to the person that is the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. Seek the face of the Lord. By the grace of God, if there was anything I prayed for, it was the person that I would marry. And to the glory of God, she also prayed very well. And the fact that you have prayed doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. But if truly you have prayed, God will bail you out of the mistakes. I may be a melancholic person and uh, easy going so as it were, but I'm very, very steadfast in my convictions. So I knew, I prayed, and God told me, this is your wife. This is the person you're going to marry. Well, I'm being very real with you. Everything was used to convince me this is the person. I see made that very mistake. But along the line, in the course of our courtship, after two years, she said she was no more convinced also. And I said, okay, if you're not convinced, but I've spoken to God. God had told me, you are my wife. If you are not convinced anymore, please be kind enough to invite me to your wedding. I will come to your wedding, and after your wedding, I will go to God and tell God I've made a mistake. That is what I call a conviction. Am I communicating? That is what? A con you must have a conviction. And after another one year, I was praying. I saw another lady I wanted to go after, but anyway, God said, no, this is the, you stay there. So I stayed. And I said, Father, let her repent of this. And she wrote me a letter of reconciliation. And God said, don't demand apology. Because that would be another kata kata point. I didn't demand apology. And she walked back and I read the letter. And we are together. We've been together for 37 years. So you must have a conviction. Well, you don't go for a blind date. Don't go for one uh, this and that. Kneel down. The knee benders are stronger than iron benders. Learn to bend your knees. But you don't want to bend your knees. They, they say you are having a courtship. You are carrying each other on each other's lap. And they say on Facebook, carrying each other, holding each other's breasts. Say, he will not join you in this church. You will not join you together. That's what they told us in those days of old. Okay, second question. Yes. See, uh, some parents in laws living in the matrimonial home make it difficult for some couples to resolve problems. Please help, sir. Yes. There is nothing absolutely wrong. Listen to the word, that word. Absolutely wrong in accommodating your mother or your father-in-law. But they have their word boundaries. But some mother-in-laws especially, they don't want to allow any boundary. They take over. If you read in-laws in episode, you will see what I'm talking about there. They will take over the kitchen, do everything. If the, your in-law is not the type that will make peace reign, accommodate them elsewhere, not in your own home. Just like I decided to flush my son-in-law and daughter-in-law that they wanted to disrupt our marriage, I flushed them. I can be very tolerant, but when you come to disrupt my marriage, <laughs> you got to go. So mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, all these things, accommodate them, take good care of them, but if they want to dictate what happens in your home, show them the boundary. Hold tight to your spouse. God will help us in Jesus' name. But take good care of her. I took good care of my own in-laws. Okay. Uh, how should couples handle expenses for the in-laws? I think it has to do Praise with the Lord. I think I've answered that very something. When you switch your parents, whatever makes them happy, right? Let them have their way. I'm telling you. 
And because we have switched our parents, let me give you this one example. I, when, my, when I was in, in London and my wife was in Nigeria, we bought five plots of land. We just the five plots and everything. And I, I sent money, they built part of it. And they went for go and fishing in the place. My mother-in-law became born again. You know, she's very zealous for the Lord, very prayerful. And after they finished the something, they were saying they wanted to plant a parish. And she told the pastor, yeah, he buy that church, he said, I want to fish a church. <laughs> and uh, nobody knew. She didn't consult any of us. The pastors came from Nigeria to America. We were just like, ah, ah, Pastor Emma Shio, thank you very much for the land you gave to us to build the church in the Lewin. Ah, I said in my head, uh, I said, oh, we praise God. <laughs> thank God for everything. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. How is the church going? Ah, we, we are, they are, if I did, in fact, they are going, okay, he gave me as if I knew everything. When I got to my house, my wife, ah, he gave them land to build church in the Lewin Road. I said, what? She did what? Eh? How can she do that? I said, eh, eh, wait, 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 wait. Did you know about it? Said, I don't know anything about it. Oh, you know, okay, wait. Ah, no, I'm going to call her. Eh, don't call her. That is what she wants. Let me call her. Ah, no, she can't do this. She, this is not done. I said, ah, what the question is, am I not the one who is telling you what happened? So what's the issue? Let me call her. Please don't call her. I took the phone. Yeah, hello. I said, ah, oh, mommy. I said, yeah. Oh, boy, there, there's a church in your place now. Hey, Mita, what the question she said to me? <laughs> uh, okay. But she, be, hey, so for me, she said, you know, you need to redeem. But I don't know what question she redeem. Hey, Mita, you come about. You know, you need to redeem. I want to redeem. I redeem. Okay, which side did you as say? If you don't want to be a little bit, you can go. That's fine. Okay, she wants to say that. I mean, but you know, but you just didn't know you're a big man. I said, Okay, fine. That is when I just leave my room, I just stroll into the church. That was what she wanted. Now, the land will I carry it on my head? What do I want to use the land for? The land is still up to tomorrow. When I got to Nigeria, I said, Where is the land? I said, if you want to even build a church, is this what we call building a church? I mean, this is too small. You can extend it to the other side. Ah, thank you, sir. This and that. She felt fulfilled. Till her death. Her wish was my command. I just wanted to make her happy. If I'm spending money on her, there's no room for jealousy because it is the mother of my wife. My wife cannot say, hey, why are you giving her that favor? Blood is thicker than water. If you now say, hey, you are abusing your mother-in-law. I think you are defending your wife for anything. When the blood meets blood, you'll be the victim. <laughs> so any money spent on your in-law, not on your own side now, it's not wasted. And on the most serious note, your spouse will love you for it. He may not talk, she may not talk, but uh, deep down, say, ah, my husband knows my mom. If when she wants to close the gate, I say, I will forgive him. Okay, uh, how do you deal with a verbally and physically abusive spouse or boyfriend? Ah, well, that is not supposed to be mentioned amongst us. You agree with that? If you are truly children of God. But I told them in my local church, if 33.3% of those of you that are in this church are Christians, then we are doing wonderfully well. If we have conservatively, now, don't, what I'm saying is not heresy. If among the so-called pastors in the world today, if you have 70% that are genuinely born again and remain born again, then the church is in good shape. Many have lost it. Many have no bearing again with Christ, but what will they do again than to be in church? So when I'm in church today, even some are sitting down here, you know your behavior, you know what you have done, that a good child of God will not do that. So you better go back. I think First uh, Corinthians... Is this 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2? Please let me check it. He said, For I determine not to know anything amongst you but Christ and Him crucified. Please check it for me if I'm correct. So I determine not to know anything amongst you. Not it tells me you are a child of God, but until I see the image of Christ in you, that you are crucified. Galatians 2 20, Apostle Paul said that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. 
Be crucified with Christ. That is the true evidence of you being a child of God. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make a display of the knowledge of nothing, and to be conscious of nothing amongst you, except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and he what? Crucified. If you can't see Christ in you, you are not a child of God. John 1, 2. John 1, 2 says, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons and daughters of God. When you give your life to Christ, you didn't become a child of God. Philippians 2, 2 says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So you have to work on it. Because you are in church, you say you are born again. You have to do pick a pick in church. You can pick Lucifer in the church. Check the life of the person you are talking about. So don't just because I saw him in the church. He said, child of God, he said, lie. Be, be sincere with yourselves. You want to be sure you are what? A true child of God. So if it is true that you are a true child of God, Malachi chapter 2 from verse 15 downwards talks about you being respectful to that very child of God. Don't deal treacherously with the wife or the spouse of your youth. You can't imagine a husband was talking to each other. Yeah, he gets me. Yeah, he gets me. If, I, if I knew that, uh, you are lunatic. I would have married you. They, told me they have lost it. They have lost it. If you have been doing that, you sit down. Go home and sit down. Am I really a child of God? Philippians, uh, Philippians 4 8. It says, he enumerated what you ought to think about. If there be anything, if there be any praise, Think of these things. That is the scripture. So you don't go, then you are busy with each other. Unbelievers are not worse off. They are in church. And you are doing all this. Let's be very sincere with ourselves. Am I communicating? Be very sincere with yourself. Am I a child of God? He says, I determine not to know anything amongst you but Christ and him what? Crucified. If truly you are crucified with Christ, then live to the glory of God. I pray God you help us in Jesus' name. Okay, the pastor for me discuss this with me, and we really want us to talk about it, about the phases of relationship, and uh, you have it in your in your in your folder there. Um, phases of a relationship, because of our time. Like I said, what is in this uh, folder, we can't finish it today. I'm not communicating, but we'll do this one. We'll do this one. Now, what you just want to identify, and you be you're at liberty to respond to this. You see, a fruit could be described as a knot, as a droop, or as a berry. Am I communicating? Now we can see these fruits. This is grape, right? What is it? Is it a droop, a knot, or a berry? A berry. Okay. This is it a droop, a knot, or a berry? A berry. Okay. A droop, a knot, or a berry? I know this will be a little bit controversial because it's described as a berry. But you have a stone inside it. Many of us, when we finish eating the flesh, we throw the stone away. We have just lost the true value of this fruit. That stone at the middle of it is more nutritionally valuable to you than any of the things that you have seen. So it is a berry. The middle, that's hard stone. You see, I, if you go to my kitchen now, I have about seven of them in the pot there. When you cut it in bits and pieces, you blend it, at, as you come to sear it on the fire, it will start to congeal. You can put either cream of wheat or your usual whatever and make it into a mala or, or a paste or whatever. And you prepare your whatever, you eat it. It works in your body system for a better health. So it is, a very, what of this? What? Okay. It's a droop. Okay. What of this? Uh, th th there's confusion now. Somebody says, what? What is the name? 
Strawberry, right? It's not a berry. You see, some those who are in the field, they know what it is. That the guy that is talking to them must be somebody who did a botany or whatever. <laughs> Amen. So he's able to give you the answer. This is not a berry. Neither is it referred to as a droop. It's a strange, unusual fruit. And that is what is happening in many marriages. You don't know what to have. You don't know who you have married. This is not a droop. Neither is it a berry. It's as soft as the grapes and every other thing. But everybody knows that this is a knot. Right? To get it to this level, some job has been done to get to this level. Yet, have they reached what the real thing? No. You need conscious effort to get the best out of some people. That may be your own spouse. Your own spouse is not as easy as just cutting it into your mouth and chewing it. Yet, the content of this nutritionally advantageous to your health, to your bone and every other thing. The vitamins that are in there, there is oil in there, everything. There is water in there. When you are getting dehydrated, the coconut uh, water is very, very good for your throat and to rejuvenate your strength and uh, give you some fresh feel when you drink the water of the coconut. So that's why we go to the Caribbean, they cut the or mature the coconut, and then they sell the water to you, you take it in. But to get in there, it takes a lot of effort. But not many of us want to work on, your, on, on our spouses. You don't want to work. It just must happen. Now, psh, even driving, you don't even care whether the engine is, it has oil, or there's no engine oil, you just get in there, or crank the engine, and start to drive. And you drive, you pick some nails on the road, you will have some blisters, and you don't even care whether the entrance of the vault has a blisters or not. And then you're just driving anyhow. You, you, you don't take care. You, the real thing is hidden. I'm not communicating. The real thing is what? Hidden somewhere. Take time. Not every time is going to be very. Even the droop. You may start very well and very fresh, and you hit the stone at the middle. When you hit the stone, what do you do? And more so this, which is still a berry. And you hit the stone, instead of appreciating what is in there, you throw it away. How many good qualities of your spouse you have thrown away? And these things are around us. Brethren, we need to have insight to all these things. Your marriage is not the worst in the world. I'm not communicating. You can still make the best of the person you have married. So understand, if you check, you, I mean, it's good to talk to people that are educated. You can read what I've written there. You can go home, sit down. At least I've explained it now. You can now say, when our relationship was started, it was a berry. Along the line, it became a droop. Now, it has become a knot. What happened? What went wrong? Do the homework. I'm not communicating. Where is your own relationship now? You started very well. Suddenly, so you just hit a stone at the middle. I mean, America has put many of us. You drive automatic cars, have you? But in reality, those who drive, that is why when you get to London, you see cards. Congratulations on passing your driving test. Because it's like going to real school. Those are the drivers. I mean, stick shift. That is the real driving. So even when you do driving in the bedroom, right? You must know how to change the gear. So just change the gear. When you are climbing the hill, you change the gear. Then if you, you, you may have to move from three, come back to one. I say, okay, then you change. You are climbing the hill. If you are going down the drain, yeah, you say, if you be back, if you. Listen, when you order pizza, how many of us you order pizza and the pizza person comes to your door mouth and flings the carton of the pizza at the door? Do you th you will, will you go to that store again to order pizza? You must, they, they bring it to the door. They press the bell. Hello, how are you doing? Great day. You are just here to deliver your pizza. Oh, this is not what I ordered. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you please go and change it? Then you drive back and go and pick the right order. And bring it again. Can I, okay, can I deliver now? Yes, deliver. Then you deliver. 
Then your delivery will be accepted. But when you come to some of you, you just get to the door. Just throw your delivery. <laughs> and then the following they say, hello, you, you want pizza? They say, we, we, don't, we don't want anything. <laughs> we are okay. We are fine. We don't want your pizza. Brother, if they have rejected your pizza, you should ask for delivery time. <laughs> so if you are still driving, I said, this journey has been long. He said, can I deliver? I said, don't deliver. I said, okay. You continue driving. <laughs> when they now say, okay, you are free to deliver. Then you deliver. In fact, the next time, they will phone your house. Excuse me, Mr. Jerry, do you want pizza? <laughs> you don't even need to phone again. They will phone. Or they call again. Hello, can we have some? So from today, no delivery without permission. And if you have a problem on when to deliver, I have a tutorial that I give to people. And if you always run, you, you, you drive on flat tire, it is going to destroy your rim. <laughs> so, you see, the journey will be very, very awkward. The tire is flat. And there are many factors. Hey, please, you see, and again, before you start to drive, please check the engine oil. If you don't want to knock the engine, check the engine oil and make sure that the engine oil is right, is in its gauge. Hmm? The entrance of the garage, the depository, make sure it is fully oiled, right? Because your tire may burst. And it's part of the reason why some flat tire occur. If you have put the oil in the, on the engine and the depository and the entrance and the tire will glide through, there will be no friction. It will be less. You see, you may have to vi visit the organizer because they need a patch. It means I see some people here, they're postgraduate students. Too. <laughs> so to avoid any patch or bruises, buy engine oil. You know where they said the engine oil? I go to Home Depot. <laughs> Please, um, you see, there are some inflators, compressors. You know, when you have flat tire, right? Some gas station, they say, air yeah, free. I have some compressors that you can use to pump your engine. They, I, think, I think if the technical department can post one or two. I mentioned some of the, the names. And uh, I don't, you see, before I used to give people some free one. If you have flat tire, wait. This one is Ghana Mano. This is Ghana Mano. This is Ghana man. I'm not going to give it to anybody, but I will leave it here for somebody. <laughs> because if, uh, if I give it to you, and you now go to use it, and you go to drive in Germany, and say it was Pastor that gave me Ghana man. <laughs> anybody, anybody can take it. Uh, when I'm packing my luggage, I'm not going to take it along. Somebody can pick it. And you go, listen. There is nothing wrong in finding a solution to your problem. We say there should be no fornication. Uh, I mean, uh, Hebrews 13, 4. Yeah. It says, marriage is honorable and the bed on the fire, but one more guy and daughters, God will what? Judge. It is not the pastor that is going to judge. It is God himself. I mean, if you serve good meal in the house, uh, there is nothing that Chin uh, or Jezebel can prepare there that way. So you have a good meal at home. But if, you're, if, you're, if your child wants to, to eat outside and get run in stomach, the second time, you're not going to go out again, to Abi, but cook better food in and outside of the bedroom. Let him be well fed. Somebody said, well, Pastor Adi, your wife doesn't stay home. She goes, she's, right now she's in Nigeria. So how do you undo yourself? I say, ah, number one, I get my full tank and there's no leakage. So it is not going to be empty before she comes back. It's a full tank. And I know how many, how many miles per gallon. <laughs> huh? How many miles per gallon? So if, I, if I'm not driving, the tank is what? It's full. For some of you, you drive anywhere. You know, listen, the day you use an object of contemplation for an object of utilitarian value, you have lost your mind. 
Don't use an object of contemplation for object of a utilitarian value. Beautiful man. Somebody asked me a question, Pastor Day. Do you like beautiful women? I say yes. Don't you like them? I say you. Tell the truth. Don't you like them? Who likes ugly things? I like them. Do you admire them? Oh yes, I admire them. When you leave your own spouse and you go to the person that's outside, she, he or she is an object of contemplation. Don't put them to utilitarian value. Admire them. Beautiful lady. I finished meditation one day. A lady came. She wanted to shoot me with two arrows. I said, hey, God bless you. <laughs> Don't shoot me with arrows. Amen? Please give me Proverbs chapter 5, verse 19. It says, let her breast be, yeah, I think I should be right. If you find it, please give it to me. Any version. Let her be as the loving hand and pleasant though. Tender, gentle, attractive. Let her bosom satisfy you at all times and always be transported with the delight in her love. I don't want this version. Give me King James, my King James version. This one is very modest. Uh -huh, this one is moderate. Let her be as a loving hand and a pleasant row. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. Is it in your Bible? Now you are looking for an arrow everywhere. Who, this arrow that has now decided to be, come, come a hoe. Who made it a hoe? Let us address the issue. Men to men. Listen, you are responsible for losing her cause. You can't abandon her now and start to see this one is more elegant. Who said? If the thing is not pack it, well packaged, pack it yourself. <laughs> the geo said, what are you looking for? What is there is where it, where it sent you everywhere. That's what I told us in this meeting. So men, are we together? Let your wife look elegant to you. It's not me. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 19. Let her breast satisfy you all the time. Use your hand to make it a cup. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I believe that we have dealt with this, but I know there are questions that people cannot ask here. And let me tell you this before I go to sit down. We are going to pray. You have had something that probably touched your own aspect of life. If you have any question, I was talking to a man at Bible, men Bible study, and a man said to me, Pastor, you made mention of something. He came to my office, and we discussed man to man. And I said, okay, I will give you some ammunitions. And I gave him the ammunitions. And they said that uh, there was celebration. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you need all these ammunitions as a man, and we whatever you need to do. I want you to talk to God right now. I want you to just talk to God. You must have had something. Yeah, we try to be funny with it. We try to present it in a very good way. That even if you play this CD in your car, you cannot corrupt any child because they may not know what we're talking about. But you talk to God today. If you have abused your spouse, whether verbal or physical abuse, ask for forgiveness today. If you never understood your spouse and you have been reacting like whatsoever, ask for forgiveness today. If you have used object of contemplation for utilitarian value, ask for forgiveness today. Promise your father God that you will not go astray again. Make today a turning point. I can stand anywhere in the world and say, anyone, male or female, 23rd of May, 1977 till now, if you have something that you will say that will make me ashamed, come out. Today may be your own day, the 12th day of the month of February 2023. You can start from today. Even if your spouse says, make it, say, listen, my dear, from this 12th day till thy kingdom come, or we've made some years to come, say, from the 12th of February 2023, there is nothing, there is nothing, and I make up my mind, I'm not going to do it. That is the way we, that's what we want to achieve at the end of this meeting. You will become faithful, absolutely faithful to your spouse. Don't play loyalty in your marriage. Loyal people fluctuate in their convictions. But a faithful person holds to the principle that sustains the system. 
Will you hold to the principle that sustains your marriage? Will you be faithful when your husband is not around? When your wife is far away, will you be faithful? Knowing that you are a bride of Christ yourself. You don't want to defile yourself. Since marriage is honorable and the bed on the files, one monger and adulterers, God will judge. Do you want God to judge you? Why don't you surrender all to the Lord Jesus Christ today? And if you are struggling by your own flesh to do it, it's not going to work. Egyptian methodology will not work perfectly in Zion. You need to come to Zion and surrender all to the Lord Jesus before these principles will work for you. If you are struggling with the flesh, it's because you have not yielded yourself over to the Lord Jesus. You've got to work out your salvation, brother. My sister, be genuinely born again. Let us be able to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 27 b Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can we see Christ in you? Can your spouse see Christ in you? When they describe you, what will your children say about you? If you have messed up big time, up till now, you can go before God today and say, this is my turning point. I make up my mind from today. These negative things, I will not do them again. This evil, I will not do them again. Father, come and have your way in my life. You can make up your mind. I've never painted the picture of a born saint. I've been very frivolous, reckless, indiscriminate when it comes to ladies. But the day, 23rd of May, 1977, I gave my life to Christ. Real. I can use the word real because I've given my life before. Counterfeit. Playing church. Leaving church and going to the cinema. Those are rubbish. I know what I'm talking about. But the day I gave my life to Christ, absolutely, I never remained the same. And up to today, that is my testimony. I can stand anywhere in the world that anybody, any living human being who has something that he will say that will make me ashamed, let the person come out. That is what I call Christianity. Can you stand like that, brother? My sister, can you stand like that, even on your job? Can your spouse be proud of you? Will the confidence be there about your person? We all have to examine ourselves. We must come to a moment when we make up our minds that from this day, I will never do this evil. And God will help your determination. Daniel 1.8. Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat. Why don't you make up your mind today that the Holy Spirit will help you that you will not defile yourself with the king's meat. If your relationship started as a berry, and today you know that it is a knot, why don't you now go before God? Give me the grace to be able to crack through this knot and get the best that is hidden from me. Father, help me. And if your own is just like smooth as a, as a berry, you can just pierce through, enjoy everything. Make sure you sustain and you don't abuse it. You don't want to abuse it. You don't want to abuse it. And if you know that you are a knot yourself, you know, very difficult to reach. Why don't you make yourself available to be reached without having to be knocked on the ground and smashed with your stone and a head hit with iron to get something good out of you? Why don't you yield yourself unto the Lord? Why don't you surrender yourself unto your spouse? Why do you want to let your ego to destroy you? Why? Why don't you submit yourself to one another? Talk to God today. None of us is a paragon of human perfection. We have our flaws and faults. But the prayer is that our flaws should not be known to man. It should be between you and your God. And when God has corrected you in the closet, you will not be disgraced in the open. When you refuse to be corrected by God in the closet, you will be disgraced outside. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Talk to your father today. This will be a turning point. And that in your marriage, there will be peace from now. There will be peace. You have the understanding of who you have married. Let it work. It's not the devil at work now. It is ignorance. Check it out. Who is your spouse? Is he a droop? Is she a droop? Is she a berry? Is she a nut? Is he a nut or a berry? Understand this and tell the Holy Spirit to help you. Tell him to help you. Tell him to help you. Thank you, mighty Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. My Father, my God, I thank you. I know, Lord God, we have spent time trying to get across to ourselves. Father in heaven, I just pray. Everything that you have heard today, let it not testify against us in Jesus' name. 
You want to see this progress and improvement in our relationship. We want to have the understanding from this day forward, oh Lord God, that your peace will rule and reign in our hearts and in our lives in Jesus' name. Just like I was to the Ephesians brethren, Father Lord God, we pray that our prayers will not be hindered in Jesus' name. We will commune with each other, Lord God, at the place of discussion. Even if we have to reason aloud, it will be with the presence of the Holy Spirit that everything will work out well at the end of the day in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that every relationship under the sound of my voice that has swept many things under the carpet and is very undulating and they are stumbling and falling. Father, I pray the old Lord God that from today, they will be sincere and open with each other. And Lord God, this relationship will work. And Lord God, we shall see the result in the church. We shall live to glorify and exalt your holy name. And above all, Father, you have mercy on us. You will count us worthy to spend time with you in heaven. Thank you, one that working, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Above all, let us finish well and finish strong. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Thank you for your patience. And uh, I'm sure that, uh, well, you have the questionnaire with you, the one on the family. You can answer that yourself. Compare your notes and see how you are running your family right now and you make a progress in Jesus' name.